Hi there, and welcome to the first episode of Next Wave TV. I'm your host, Tony Reale, and in this vidcast series, we're going to go over tips and tricks for small time filmmakers and graphic designers. Today's episode is going to focus around an effect that I came up with in Adobe After Effects for a short film we called The Memory. In that film, we had several flashback scenes, and in one instance, a character appeared somewhat like a ghost and then faded out. I had several questions on how I came up with that effect, and in today's episode, we're actually going to go over that. So let's get started. All right, so now that we're in After Effects, uh, we have both shots of our footage imported right here. And you can see the first layer is the actress as she's doing her scene. And the second layer is the car just by itself, you know, the seat in the car by itself. Um, and to get this to line up correctly, basically we had the actress do her shot and the camera right now is set up on a tripod so we had her do her shot and then just get out of the vehicle and kept rolling as she's out of the vehicle that makes the things line up fairly well um, it's not perfect but it makes things line up pretty well that way you can avoid green screening and you know the advantage here without green is green screen you can get the the proper shadows and the way everything would look correctly as if she was really in the shot and you know that's something that's really hard to pick up when you're when you're doing a green screen uh, so first thing we're going to do with this layer selected, we're going to grab the pen tool and we're going to make a mask. And so we're just going to go around and make a fairly rough mask. It doesn't have to be perfect um, because we have the two shots already lining up. So anything that doesn't go through um, is just going to you know, not be that noticeable. And then we can go through and kind of fix any mistakes that we made in the mask that don't look quite right. And we kind of we're gonna scrub through, make sure everything lines up. Like right here, her hair gets cut off, so we're gonna bring that back out just a little bit. And you know, bring this one out, and just play around with it so you get the, you get the effect. You know, it's basically it's whatever you want it to be. It doesn't have to be perfect. All right. So now that we have our mask, we want to make sure that the mask is set at add. It is right now, but I'm gonna show you um, in the mask properties you want the mask to be set at add. If it's set at subtract it will go and it will take throughout everything that's in the mask and add everything that's outside of it. Easy way to show this is I'm going to bring up the transparency controls and disable that. So you see here this everything inside the mask is transparent then. We go back in and we change it to add everything outside that mask is transparent and one thing we want to do is we want to feather it out so we're going to take the feather controls and we're going to feather it out not too much maybe maybe you know 36 should be fairly good and make sure things aren't cut off with that so that looks pretty good and we'll go in now we want to add some effects i'm going to bring this layer back in and i'm going to disable the outline so we can see it better and we're going to go into effect we're going to go to color correction and hue and saturation Might be cut off off of the screen there but that's hue and saturation we're gonna bring the saturation down so that it's black and white basically and that gives us the effect that I was looking for I wanted all the flashback scenes to be black and white you can go with ever whatever effect that you want um, now if you see here it's kinda cutting it off it, we're getting black and white before the actress so if we go back into the mask properties and we bring the expansion down that will change the actual size of the mask and we'll bring it just to the point where it kind of cuts off everything that's not her. Not perfect but yeah, it's pretty good. And uh, maybe bring this up just a little bit. There we go. So that's pretty good. Another thing that I added was a glow effect and that kind of gave it an ethereal look. So we go to effect, stylize, and glow and the the threshold's pretty good. We'll just bring the radius up a bit and that yeah that kind of gives it kind of an ethereal look to it that looks pretty good and maybe bring the threshold down the threshold is the level at which uh, it starts creating the glow effect so a lower threshold the light the darker colors will start glowing a higher threshold and only the lightest colors will start glowing so we'll bring that down so that makes most things glow and yeah that looks pretty good right there now another thing we had was the actor the ghost effect was kind of translucent so we're gonna go down or select that layer and hit T and that brings up 
uh, the opacity and we're going to bring that down to about 90 percent and that gives it a nice kind of translucent effect and we also had the actress fade in so what we can do is bring it to a good spot that we like it hit the stopwatch and that creates a keyframe now if we bring it back to where we want to start fading in and we bring the opacity down to zero percent that causes it to fade in right there we go to a spot where we want it to start fading out hit another keyframe go over and then have it fade out to zero now we've created a nice fade in effect for the ghost and that looks pretty good right there now if you want to change it around if you don't want it to be black and white you can bring the saturation back up and then maybe mess around with the hue you know maybe make it green or blue or red or make make them look evil you, know, you can do pretty much any effect that you want this is just a kind of basic tutorial to kind of get you off your feet and show you how we did that effect now if you don't have after effects one thing that you can do if you want your character to still show up as a ghost uh, you can have them fall asleep in your house while it's getting fumigated and just make sure that you have them come back for the shots properly now I, I actually probably shouldn't joke about that I'm sure that there's uh, there's tens of dozens of fumigation related accidents every decade or something. Anyways, uh, I hope this tutorial was helpful and I hope that uh, you can basically take some of the fundamentals out of here and be able to apply it for your own application. <laughs>All right, now for some of you, that was a very basic tutorial. And if you're looking for something more advanced, there's two great resources you can check out. One of which is creativecow.net, and another one is videocopilot.net. Andrew Kramer does some fantastic tutorials, and you can learn a lot from there. Well, that's it for today's episode. In future episodes, we're going to go over uh, inexpensive camera equipment to get yourself off the ground and started for filmmaking. We're going to also go over some additional tutorials and After Effects and uh, maybe some interviews with some people. So we're going to see where we can go from there. Uh, but I really want this to be your series. So go ahead and send me an email. Uh, my email address is nwtv at nextwavegraphics.net and you can send me an email there or you can leave a comment on the bottom of this film or even send me a message over YouTube. Uh, so let me know what you, ideas you have, uh, any questions you have. I'll see what I can cover and see what questions I can answer. And uh, we'll see where we go from there.